is a pathway to many abilities some consider to be unnatural. Is it possible to learn this power? Not from a Jedi. I suppose uh, coming to present the last episode of this saga, which is the, the history, is the story of your life in a way, almost. I mean, uh, what sort of state of mind do you enjoy? George? Uh, well, I'm very relieved that the finally have finished it and it's now one movie instead of six and um, it's it's fun to be back at Cannes because uh, many 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 years ago when I was at the uh, director's fortnight here um, is when I made the deal for Star Wars and so I was born here and I guess this is where the last big push is going to be the last big presentation or the first presentation of the last film let's put it that way <laughs> I'm happy I don't have to compete with those films because I probably wouldn't win. <laughs> so, um, you know, it, it, it's nice to be able to be recognized and have the film be recognized without having to be in a contest. Uh, I'm not a big one for contests. Uh, just being here is an honor. And um, so I hope all the films that are here feel that way. The council wants you to report on all the chancellor's dealings. That's treason. We are at war, Anakin. Very dangerous putting them together. I don't think the boy can handle it. I don't trust him. I need your help, son. I'm appointing you to be my personal representative on the Jedi Council. You're on this council, but we do not grant you the rank of master. You were there, Hayden Christensen. So, Hayden Christensen, you were there when George Lucas said, uh, cut. You know, end of screen, you know, end of the filming. How did you, what did you feel when that happened? And uh, what was George Lucas like at the time? Um, it, it was a very overwhelming moment for, for myself and I'm, I'm sure for George as well, for everybody involved, you know. It was, it was the end. Um, you know, I, 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 uh, I, I, it was very bittersweet, you know, everyone had, had a slight tear in their eye, you know. Um, but, but, but so it goes. One of the original concepts was how does a democracy turn itself into a dictatorship on the personal level? It was how does a good person turn into a bad person? And part of the observations of that is that most bad people think they're good people and they're doing it for the right reason. And then the other uh, core element of the movie is, again, condensing things down to very simple levels. Uh, and in this particular case, uh, greed and self-centeredness uh, being the root of uh, a personality that will become so self-absorbed self that it will, you know, hurt and corrode everyone around him. What? Obi-Wan and the Council don't trust me. Learn to know the dark side of the Force and you will achieve a power greater than any Jedi. <laughs> Who could have done this? <laughs> Twisted. By the dark side, young Skywalker has become. I feel so helpless. Natalie Portman, there's a lot of emotion in your role and in your character in this film, in this third episode in particular. It's, it's very strong emotionally. And so you're sort of the link with Hayden Christensen. I mean, how did you prepare for this? Did you do a lot of rehearsing or did you talk uh, with George Lucas a lot? I mean, how do you prepare for a character like this? Well, I think the the just the storyline of what they're going through is so strong that it's easy to relate to emotionally. And um, we did have rehearsal on this one, which we, we did more rehearsal on this one than the others, and, and we worked together. And also, having worked with Hayden before and, and knowing each other better, and um, that really added to it as well, because I think 
there was sort of a, a deeper level of you know trust and, and, and understanding between us and, and that definitely added to it. And I think it's really nice because those scenes give you sort of the, the other side to make it more ambiguous what, an, what evil means because you see sort of a lighter, softer side to, to Anakin's, you know, Hayden's character and, and, and it, it really brings sort of a, a blurrier image of the line between, you know, good and evil. I was really looking forward to this one, though. Though you know, a lot of it sort of rests on on that transformation. I was I was very comfortable um, in the environment this this go around. You know, I, uh, George uh, did such a good job with, with 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 really mapping out what that arc would be, and so really I just had to follow his lead and 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 try not to screw it up. You know, <laughs> uh, but I, I had good fun going to the dark side. Were you surprised that Anakin Skywalker and Darth Vader would become the central character of the series of the, the saga? That it's the bad guy, in fact, who's the hero in this last film. Well, um, that has always been the original intent. If you think of the first three films as one film, which is what it was intended to be, um, you know, Darth Vader comes in the front door, scares everybody, kills a few guys, mm -hmm. and then you follow it through, and then you find out that uh, Luke is his father, and then eventually it ends okay. up with him uh, not being the bad guy, but actually being a rather sad guy, and then eventually being the hero and killing the Emperor. Um, that, If you saw it as one movie, that's the movie you'd see. And one of the problems uh, I had is that Darth Vader became such an icon of evil that when it got split up over six years, um, the impact of him as a tragic character got lost. So that was one of the inspirations for going back and doing the backstory because it really is about, it's really the tragedy of Darth Vader is the story. to popular belief never thought that it would go beyond the three movies you know that was that that note was made in 1977 and I said there were sequels and there were two sequels that I'd already written so the characters and the backstory and all that stuff had been written but I felt that if I got through the three it would be a miracle and that was going to be the end of it the over 25 fan base is loyal to the first three films um, and they are actually in their 30s and 40s now so that they're in control of the media, they're in control of the web, they're in control of everything, basically. So mostly what you're hearing from are people over 25 years old. Uh, the, the films that those people don't like, which is the first two, um, actually are very fanatically adored by the under 25-year-olds. And if you get on the web and you listen to these conversations, they are always at each other's throats. You're at the Cannes Film Festival, and this is the most uh, media-covered event after the Olympics. Your picture is taken over and over and sold for thousands and, and thousands of dollars. How do you feel about you know, your image and, and your photo uh, being worth so much? <laughs> you Go, ahead. Go ahead, Sam. It's worth thousands of dollars? <laughs> really? Well, I guess I should sign some things and sell them myself. Um. You were the chosen one!